everyone. M Live's Brendan Quinn here alongside Michigan football beat writer Nick Baumgartner uh, for the new audio version of our weekly ramble through Michigan sports. Uh, we are going to more of a podcast format so that you don't have to look at our ugly mugs, uh-huh. uh, the, the, the cold dead eyes that come with football season. They're only going to get worse. You know, we, we, also, years. We, we also thought that with winter coming, <laughs> the paler we get, no one no one should have to sit through a half an hour. In reality, we just had a problem uploading the video and decided this might be, just be easier to do or, anyway. Or that. <laughs> um, so this will be a Maybe a little easier for everyone to, to, to get access to, uh, if you can listen to your car a little easier, um, things like that. So, well, we plan on putting it on, uh, getting it on iTunes, and then uh, also, I believe we'll host it through SoundCloud. That's the goal. Right, and that'll be uh, what we do, and I think this this will probably be what we do just from now on. I think it's probably easier for everybody. I think I've also, I've also seen people say that it's struggle, they struggle to like, get the, like if their browser's struggling or yes, whatever. Yes, that's Sometimes been a problem. Sometimes that could be an issue. And it'll be in the app, too, if anybody has the app, so on the mlive.com. And people have complained about that I drink coffee while I'm... If for the odds of me getting through 45 minutes of a day without drinking coffee, is, you're asking a lot there, folks. So yeah, um, now you don't have to look for us. Now you don't have to get mad at us. Now you just have to listen to my awful accent. <laughs> and, uh, it's probably and just going to get worse now. <laughs> probably. Uh, I'm a little more conscientious uh, on camera, so... Uh, all right. Well, Nick. Obviously, we're gonna let's clean up the aftermath of a uh, of this loss to Michigan State uh, uh, on Saturday. You were there. I was not. I was in Philly. Um, but I mean, at, at this point, it's now Wednesday. You talked to Blake O'Neill and other guys last night. I was there. They seem to be handling it far better than fans are. Um, <laughs> basically. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the that's the takeaway that people far too often forget. Um, in in college sports, and, and I mean, it, I, I guess it depends on the kid because you know I've seen situations at this school before, this program where someone has been involved in a player has been involved in a pretty nasty, unfortunate play or something that's been something that cost the team a game or something that was really a bad deal, and they did not handle it very well. I mean, it was something that they carried with them for a couple years or maybe just a couple games. But Blake O'Neill doesn't seem to be. Are you referencing someone in yeah, particular yeah, there? But I'm not gonna, you know, we're not gonna get into the specifics. But I mean, it's happened. Not well, some ones, some ones. It's happened with multiple people in multiple sports. Yeah. Okay, so that's not every kid can handle it. That's what that's just where, where I'm going here on this point. Not every kid can handle <laughs> the air of Buckner and Weber are flowing. Well, I mean, it just it happens. <laughs> yeah, it happens. absolutely. So Constantly. not every kid handles it the way that uh, a Blake O'Neill has handled it, and, and the way he's handled it has been uh, that of you know. Uh, Almost like a pro. I mean, in, in many ways. I mean, he, he understands it's a mistake. He understands it was cost him the game. Uh, he took full ownership of it, and he's moved on. I mean, you know, he said, "I'm not watching it on on uh, Sports Center yeah. and these things." I, he watched it in the film room with John Baxter to figure out what they could have done better. And basically, he was like, "What I could have done better was caught the ball." <laughs> because if he, you know, he even said, "If I caught it, forget the forget the way the thing was aligned, which was probably a mistake." Yeah. And you know, I think Harbaugh sort of admitted that you know we asked him if they uh, what, or what were those gunners doing out there and he said well you'd, you'd like to do if you had a shot to do it again differently yeah, yeah. you'd do it differently uh, but O'Neill even said uh, regardless of that the, the idea was to roll right and punt it and he said I would have gotten it off with no problem I lo- I've looked at it 15 different times in the film room with Baxter and if you catch it take a step to the right and kick it away it goes because if you look at the film all that pressure is coming from the back side yeah. and the pocket wasn't going to roll to the back side they had it set up they had it set up the way it needed to be set up. It was going to roll away from that pressure. It's going to be close. It's going to be close, but he feels like he could have gotten off. So either way, he's handled it very well. He's I moved on from it. The players, some of them said, interest, uh, important to note, some of them said, I'll probably never get over it mm-hmm. from a long-term scheme of things. But in terms of the here and now, I have to get over it. How they handle it going forward now, I guess, is the real test. It looks like uh, they're doing all right with it. And they're always going. players are always a little more resilient than fans are. That's just part of reality. So Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I can't tell. I was... You know, I was kind of in the back of the pack while Blake O'Neill was talking last night, and I was trying to get a sense of whether his background plays into the fact that, you know, I mean, he's pretty chill about this whole thing. He, he looked he looked just fine, and, like, if maybe it's a different weight, if you don't grow up in a world where oh, yeah, college I think football is the biggest thing yeah. in the world. I, but at the same time, I'm sure in his mind he has, he has pl- played out the comparison of, what the equivalent in Aussie rules football, which is in his, which yeah. his actual background is, what that would right. be. I don't yeah. know, like, I, 
missing the uprights from like five feet out. I don't know. I don't want to pretend to know what that would be. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that come on, uh, Nick. Are they even studying that? I think that yeah, there's part of that. Even said somebody was like, "Do you understand the gravity of?" what this means and he kind of looked at him like it was a mistake in a football game yeah right which is really a refreshing it was a amazing take from a guy I was to not be like it. to not be like yeah i realized it and i wanted to just you know bury my head in 10 feet of sand and never come back up for air again it seemed like some of the media asking the yeah. questions took yeah, it a little we're, more we're, seriously right than and like so that was refreshing and he's handled it fine um the one concern i think sometimes you have when players are involved with plays like that as if it's going to impact their uh, their ability to do something the next time. Maybe they get the yips or something. Yeah, uh, does, it, does it seem like that's going to be a problem for him just because of the way he's talking? No, I guess we'll have to see. You know, we'll have to see how it works because, um, again, we've said this before. We've had we've seen guys that have struggled or missed a big play or mm-hmm. done something mm-hmm. that really was just a disaster of a play and they just happened to be involved in it and it impacted him for a long time. Yeah. Uh, whether or not this does, uh, we'll have to wait and see. He says it's the equivalent of a, of a huge missed free throw. The next time you get to the line in a right. key situation, and, and we'll just you, go ahead and say one of them. Okay, of we'll just go ahead and say one of them. When Jordan Morgan missed the layup against mm-hmm. Indiana the year, uh, when it bounced off the it, off the square, off the rim, sat, sat there for a minute, there. fell off. Jordan admitted uh, many times over that that just killed him mm-hmm. mentally for the rest of the year. It killed him every day. It took him months to get over that, and it hurt his play. It hurt how he uh, how he performed. Eventually, he got over it, and he ha- ended up having a great finish to his career. He drew the charge in right. the game. But even then, that season for him was for the rest of the way was like a wash because he was just like it was just a mental right a mental thing, and he was a pretty mentally tough guy. So uh, we'll see. I mean, if he goes out against Minnesota and. Rips off a couple 60-yard punts, then I guess he's probably good to go. He moves right forward from it. I mean, he seems to think that yeah. it's not going to be a big deal. He says, put me back out there, I'll run the same play over again, I'll catch it, and we'll get the punt off, and that's that. But uh, you, obviously you can't do that. You understand the side, too. He's a fifth-year senior. He's an adult. He's you know he's been around the block a time or two. He's not a freshman. He's not you know a second-year player. Um, I think he'll be fine. Uh, I, st- you know, I still think he's one of the better punters in the league. Um, right. Whether or not the fans are ever fine with it, that's not really Blake O'Neill's concern, um, and they probably won't be. And you know, I mean, it's going to get replayed over and over and over again for, you know, from now until whenever college football right. isn't a thing anymore. I mean, that was just that's just how it, that's just what it is. So now, part of the deal. Now I was in a banquet hall drinking an IPA when this play. Jeez, oh, uh, well, you should just brag it. When this play here. broke out, <laughs> but you were in the press. Box. I was not, man. Tell tell the folks at home. What the scene was like, you know, behind the glass when uh, up, up in the press box, when everyone who's writing mm-hmm. live game stories sees this 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 uh, just completely improbable, you know, Haley's comet of a play occur right in front of their eyes. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things that you have to understand, um, you know, for especially the the good handful of us that sit in the front there, um, you know, from the news and the freep and everybody that's here every day. Uh, you know, in those situations, we're finishing our, you know, the first run of a game story, which is going to be, you know, pumped out at the buzzer, basically. It's yeah. going to run, uh, and it's going to be the first thing they take for any edition of a paper or whatever else, yep. and that's the first thing that we have to, we have to get that out immediately at the buzzer. Of any doesn't matter the time of the game, it needs to be done uh, at the buzzer. So basically what you have is... It's called writing live. Right. You, ha- you, have a, you, you have a situation where Michigan gets a stop with two minutes to go in a game that was back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and you can't really write ahead because everything that is happening from here on out is, is irrelevant. So, finally it looks like something's going to stick. You know, there's two minutes to go. Michigan gets the ball back. They're killing clock. Uh, trying to get the hell, you know, the hell out of there, basically, with a win. Uh, and so what you're doing at that point when they line up for the punt is you you got one eye on your screen, and you got one eye on the field, and you're just waiting for the game to end because you're waiting to hit send on uh, you know, Jim Harbaugh's 1-0 against Michigan State. Um, uh, they're in the college football playoff conversation. I think I wrote in there that they're in total control of their own destiny in the Big Ten title race. I mean, that's one of those things, too. You know, it, it works both ways. I, I used to say I could go back and find you the story I wrote before Trey Burke hit his three-point shot against Kansas, and you mm-hmm. probably wouldn't like reading that. Uh, <laughs> you, probably wouldn't, you probably wouldn't like reading what I had written earlier either because it's a backwards, it's, it works the other way around. But, um, but, yeah, so the punt happens, and you're looking at your screen looking up, and then all of a sudden you're like, whoa, what's going on here? The ball drops. And then, you know, I'm thinking, okay, he's probably going to fall. You know, and this is all thoughts going on in your brain in, like, a matter of a hair of a second. Besides holy blank. But that doesn't even, that's not even a thing at that point because it's like, it's, I don't know if it's just me being just beaten down <laughs> by this job, seeing crazy things to be like, okay, well, he dropped the snap. You know, it's not anything where I'm just like, oh, you know, just freaking out, screaming. You're like, well, something's well, going on here. 
I didn't say freaking out screaming. So I said, something's going on here. You see the ball drop, and you figure, okay, he's going to fall on it, um, and Michigan State's going to have like a Hail Mary or maybe a field goal or something. And if they kick a field goal, they win the game. Yeah. And then, well, no, it didn't. he didn't fall on it. So then he, he tries to spin kick, and then again you're thinking, okay, well, it's going to fall on the ground. And they're going to be like wrestling for it or something. And I'm still thinking at that point, we should say it's going to have like a field goal. Mm-hmm. Well, no, the ball doesn't fall on the ground. It falls, <laughs> pops into the air and falls miraculously into the arms of Jalen Watts Jackson, now a Michigan State legend, I'm sure, who, ironically enough and sadly enough for Michigan, basically had run himself out of the play. Yeah. Had taken a he taken the wrong route in a rush in a rush lane, uh, went outside of the punt protector Ben Braden away from the football outside of the play, was behind the ball at that point. Think it, and, and if anything else happens, you're thinking, well, the Jalen Watts Jackson's out of the play. Yes. But the ball pops out just so, and credit him, obviously, for reaching back with the right hand, pulling that thing That's in. That's a hell of a grab. Great grab. Great reaction. Yeah. Doesn't break stride. Catches it basically in as he's running. And this is all happening like snap of a finger. And the minute that happens, you're like, well, he's going to score a touchdown. Because <laughs> now Michigan can't catch him because... He didn't have to break stride. He didn't have to bend over to pick up a ball. He didn't have to, whatever. I mean, it happened so perfect for Michigan State in every one of those instances. Like, even when O'Neal's, like, turning around and he, like, swats it with his hand, if his his hand misses the ball by, like, a quarter of an inch, it hits the ground, and the wrestler for it, the game's over. But it didn't. Everything had to go just so for Michigan State uh, for that to happen. Uh, I mean, how many times did you have to watch the replay to even see... That he hit the ball. Countless. Well, that I didn't get to that point yet because he crosses the goal line, and now I'm thinking for whatever reason in my head that there's time left on the clock. All right. So I'm like, okay, well, there's going to be an extra point, and I'm going to have time to write what just happened or whatever, and then I look back, I'm like, oh, there's no time on the clock. All right. And this kid is down on the ground, and someone is, like, writhing in pain in the corner of the end zone when, at the time, we didn't know who it was. And I'm like, is that a Michigan player down there? Mm-hmm. Is that because there was a couple guys down there trying to tackle him? Is that a Michigan player down there? Is that a different Michigan State player? Is that the guy who scored? And at this point, we don't even know who the hell the guy is that scored. It was yeah. just this wild, random thing that just total chaos uh, up there. I think a lot of people wondering what happened. A lot of people asking who the hell scored the touchdown. Is that the guy down there yeah. injured? And originally, we it was a pretty scary thing for us in real time because it, they brought the stretcher for this guy. And I'm like, did someone, and again, I didn't know, I could, we could not see who was down there. There's so many Michigan, guys packed around. Could have been a Michigan player, could have been a Michigan State right. player, couldn't see. So they're bringing the stretcher out, and I'm like, well, someone got a neck injury? What's going on? Mm-hmm. It was just total mayhem. Mm-hmm. And you'll never see anything like that again. You watch football for 500 years. If you're lucky enough to live 500 years, yeah. whatever, or maybe unlucky, we'll see. I guess. You can watch football forever. You'll never see a play like that ever again. Uh, total chance thing. However, at the same time, you credit Michigan State for finishing the game. And Michigan, as they've said countless times already, not one play, one play doesn't, you know, finish it, and Michigan didn't finish the game. So there it is. You know, that's it, and it's over. So you have no other choice but to move on and soldier ahead, but uh, certainly a wild moment, and I don't think anyone's ever seen anything like it and probably never will again. You mentioned the what could have happened. Obviously, Jake Rudock had opportunities yeah. to, to probably make that a two-touchdown victory. Certainly. Um, Unfortunately, you don't want to put it all on his shoulders, but the quarterback situation going into the bye week, let's let's look at it this way. Do you is there any do you have any hint of doubt that Jake Rudock is the quarterback for the final five games? No, yeah, he's the season? guy. I don't have any I don't I don't think that's a that's even a situation. I, I again I he's been so clear about that's our guy and that's the guy that's keeping us out of disasters. Mm-hmm. And they value that, I think as much as anything else. And I think that, again, I mean, it's just not even a road that I would go down unless Harbaugh brought it up, which he hasn't. No. And he hasn't even, like, entertained it. Mm-hmm. So he's the guy, and he, the situation is what it is. I mean, we knew this going into the season. Sure. And it was a, not an ideal spot. You know, they didn't inherit anybody They didn't inherit anybody that was ready to play football at this level. Um, uh, that, that was made, That's been made clear. Jake Rudock was the best guy in camp. It wasn't even close. That's what that's what Harbaugh said. wasn't even close. Mm-hmm. Best quarterback for the team, and it's not even a debate. There was, there was no one on his heels. There was no one coming up near. And I'm, we're talking about Shane Morris now. wasn't ready. Wilton Spade wasn't ready. So he's the guy, and he's not turning it over in, the, in that game. I mean, I think they're going to value that. However, at some point, you have to look back, and if you're Michigan, you're looking back and you're saying, if 
if Michigan had a quarterback that avoided mistakes at Utah and just made simple downfield throws yeah. against Michigan State, they would be 7-0, and and they'd be number one or number two in the country. And that's reality. So that's the situation you just have to live with, I think. I think you just have to – and that's why I think Harbaugh's been so protective of Rudock on that because he doesn't want him to, you know, fall apart mentally because he doesn't have another option. The other option is to put in a guy who has turnover issues, has accuracy issues of his own, right. doesn't have the command of the offense – you know that Rudolph does, um, and you're worse off. So I just have to. It's like a ride or die situation. It's just, it the, just the, is what it the is. The conversation that's going that is inevitable. Just having done this before. But when you look back teams. on it, when you look back on it, it's going to be Brady Hope couldn't get a guy ready to play football quarterback. Jim Harbaugh well, couldn't yeah, get a guy in your time. I mean, and that's what it is. The, the I'm talking the conversation that's going to play out over the next few weeks is okay. They got two losses. The Big Ten title is yes, it's still sure. it's still possible, and so you you stick with Rudock until that's the case. If they pick up another loss, the oh, con- if, like the wheels fall off or something. If they pick up another yeah. loss, the conversation will be like, is it worthwhile to see what Morris can do? Oh yeah, that's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. If, if there's a loss, yeah. that will be the conversation. Like if they go to Minnesota and he throws two picks and absolutely. just can't make a throw, and, absolutely. Oh yeah, then absolutely. at that point, then at that point, you know, and you don't want to you don't want to pile on because yeah, he has done a lot of good things and he has. a Learned an extremely complicated right, and system and, and, and handled himself like a pro. <laughs> he had a win the other day, and yeah, absolutely, the last absolutely, play. absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Um, but, but but the fact remains that there were right, there are miss, there are missed throws that you want uh, that a quarterback needs to make um, at this level, and uh, with 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 Rudock, you know, he is the this this is also the pro, this is the conversation that is inevitable also with a fifth year one year rental guy. Yeah. Um, so we'll see because people who think it's inevitable that it's impossible that Michigan won't feel lingering effects in, at Minnesota are kidding themselves. Right. Um, what happened after they lost to Colorado on the Hail Mary night four? They were undefeated going into that game. Yeah, lost. Just, I'm just trying to take it. You looked. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I heard a thing or two. Yeah. And the wheels fell. The wheels totally sure. fell off that season. What was an extremely talented Michigan team? Mm-hmm. They just they couldn't pick themselves back up. These things do happen. And just be, and I know people are just like, well, Harbaugh. That's their answer. Yeah, Harbaugh. So that won't happen. Oh, that, that I don't. I'm not ready to say that that's uh, 100%. Uh, no, he, he's not, not infallible. You can't you can't say it's infallible. But at the same time, <laughs> you you uh, I would put my chips on the on the side of well, I think I'd rather have him as the coach. Well, clearly then. A lot of other options in that situation. And don't get me wrong. I think they're going to. I think um, they're going to go into Minnesota. I think they're going to beat the hell yeah. out of them. I, I, I think it'll be a, a great response. But well, I think the buy might help in the situation. I don't know. I, I no. I don't. Some of the guys said yesterday, like you know, yeah, you'd like to get out there and get the get this taste out of your mouth. But they also said, and they admitted they were like, it took me a day and a half. I'm talking as a player now. It yeah. took me a day and a half to get over that. So all of Sunday and most of Monday, it took them to get over that. If they had a game this week, that means that they're they're no good to the coaches on Sunday because right. they're they're a mess. They're no good to the coaches on half of Monday because they're a mess, or most of Monday because some of them are still struggling with it. And on Tuesday, it's still impacting them. So now you're all of a sudden you're to Wednesday. You got a game in a couple of days, and you've gone through two practices that were probably just crap, right? Because your guys had a hangover on this thing. Maybe a bye week's a good thing because I kept thinking that the other day. I just thought, you know, if these guys are, it's, it, it's going to take some guys a while to get over that. Mm-hmm. And you're not going to be as fresh as a daisy immediately after the game. It, the 24-hour thing, you know, that doesn't. Yeah. Harbaugh even said himself, like, I don't believe in that. And it will help to go home, you know, to leave. Yeah. That and you get away from it. Go so, see your family. Go talk to your parents. Go see your, you know, the friends you grew up with, and be able to BS and hang around. And yeah. Da 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 for just a couple of days. Um, not to mention, the buy in the middle of the year, as opposed to early and things like that. I mean, that's huge for a big for, point for, for physically yeah. for for guys to actually be a lot able of guys to take, that are dinged up. Days off. You know, uh, Arnold said the other day when we talked to him after the radio show that he fully expects Drake Johnson to be fully healthy after this buy. Yeah, he's been battling through some stuff. Davion Smith is in the similar. He'll be fully healthy. Other than that, they don't have any injuries. Mm-hmm. But just the guys you know, have been gone for the year. But, but yeah, the guy, yeah. you know, you get, everyone's dinged up. Though, everyone, yeah. everyone has sure. their is surely going to sleep well, with pain at this point. But when was the last year's buy? He had two. They had two last year. That's right. Did they have anyone late? <laughs> they could have had a hundred buys. It wouldn't matter. <laughs> it wouldn't matter. They had one after the. Uh, well, they had two. They had one after. 
like the Penn State game where they finally got a win. Right. And then that meant they had two weeks to prepare for Michigan State, and they still got just trucked. Right. And I think they had one somewhere else in there, too, that they just didn't do it anyway. It's all yeah. blur. The other part, too, and again, <laughs> that speaks to the last year, if there's any team in the country that is uh, experienced at handling adversity, I would think it would be this one team. Would, one would think. These guys have been through enough uh, stuff to – they know how to – get through something move forward but and I'll tell you we'll what see. in regard to that when the pack kind of broke away from Davion Smith last night and we, we were talking and I said given everything that's happened in this program are you kind of curious to see how this group responds to mm-hmm. what's really the first major bout of adversity under, under, Harbaugh. under yeah. Harbaugh and he kind of looked at me with one of those like are you effing You're, kidding you me it looks before? like you know like <laughs> Like, and just kind of a smirk, and he was like, "No, man, like I know how my guys are going to re- yeah. like are going to respond to this." Um, and it it was different than last year when all the craziness would happen, and you would, you would oh, and then guys, and we, should, yeah, we would ask guys, oh yeah, how how are you going to respond? And it was a look oh, it was during the headlines. <laughs> it was a look of uh, it was terror gonna, in, some, gonna, in some. I'm going to say the right thing, but it was holy either, hell, yeah, I have no idea. It was either someone that was scared, yeah. clearly visibly shaken by something, or it was some, and had no answers. Uh, or someone that was just pissed off yeah, and just mad, kind of throwing their hands. And up. that's right. and that's not really an emotion that you really want because that's out of either way you're out of control. Yeah. You know, I didn't see anybody that we talked to yesterday, and it was a wide range of people that were in any way out of control. They were, and they, you know, it was it was it sucked for them. They admit that, but at the same time, it was okay. We've been through enough stuff here. We know how to. J- Jordan Lewis digest was adversity. And he, yeah, he had one of the biggest matchups of the game. But talking to him, that dude. He is as steady as a fire hydrant, man. Yeah. Like, he's just rock. That's why he's solid. a good player. Yeah. That's why he is, is the way he is with, you know, on the field. But, again, he was the same way. He said, I'm still not over that loss. Mm-hmm. And basically hinted that he, maybe I never get over that loss. You know, Jordan Lewis grew up in Detroit. This is a big deal for him. He'll, yeah. he'll probably carry that with him in some way forever. But at the same time, Jordan Lewis is one of these guys that's, not to say professional, but professional enough about it to be like, yeah, it's always going to suck, mm-hmm. but we got a game to win in two weeks, and you know, he'd said the goal now is to win out. So anyone looking for what's Michigan's goal or focus, they're going to try and win every game the rest of the way. I think I saw a couple coaches write the old hashtag ten and two. They want to finish season ten yeah. and two. Finish the season I think ten they and will. two. I do think they will. And who knows what happens yeah. if they get into a, if something happens with a three way tie in this Big Ten East, then all hell breaks oh, loose in that. And that let me clarify. I think they go into Ohio State nine and two. Winning. Okay. I think they yeah. win out going into Ohio State. What happens in that game? I don't. I have no idea. Right. I can't predict that a month out plus. But I think they definitely win out yeah, going into that game. I the, think that Ohio State game is tough to predict. But I, yeah. I think they. I don't think they lose before then. I think they find a way. And the one I, the one I keep saying that I would have pause on would be playing at Penn State. But again, no chance. Um, at you know Penn State isn't very good. Um, it's a road game, and that's why I you know kind of get hesitant sometimes. Uh, but, you know, again, I'll, I'll take Jim Harbaugh at the end of November over James Franklin at the end of November. I think I told you yesterday. All day, every day. I told you yesterday. I will, what is Penn State doing? Without <laughs> even knowing what the number on that game is, I take Michigan to win outright and cover. <laughs> and that I, will be uh, Christian Hackenberg's last swan song in uh, it's gonna be Beaver a, Stadium. It's going to be a sad little tune then because there is no way James Franklin is beating Jim Harbaugh. There's no way. Hackenberg comes back for his senior year, right? I mean, unless no. he just says, I'm going to sit out and I told you my plan for Hackenberg. <laughs> Hackenberg needs to just sit out next year, oh, finish God. his degree at Penn State, and then be, be the like, greatest fifth-year transfer in the history wars of for college sports. It would be amazing. Because if he puts himself in a position to play in that crap heap of an offense again, wow. he's out of his mind. Wow. And I don't know if he's ready for the NFL, but he's definitely not ready to play another year Behind that line and in that system, he was out of his mind uh, for sticking with that. I mean, <laughs> in any way, but that's neither here. Nor that there. is a that is a national tragedy that they have it him really playing in that true. offense. Pat Narduzzi uh, said it was the other day. Pat Narduzzi is now <laughs> coaching at Pitt, and I think Pitt and Penn State finally start playing again like next year. Yeah, I think next year. And uh, we're getting off topic now, but whatever. It's Ooh. funny. Narduzzi has spent like the past six months just taking open pot shots at James Franklin and Penn State, and he did it the other day where he said something along the lines of like. You know, it's pretty easy for a quarterback, a really good quarterback, to get rattled. You know, by way of a bad play caller or a bad quarterback coach, which we've seen here. Yeah. And he said, and he says, and you know, there's one instance of that not far down the road. Obviously, <laughs> referring to 
Franklin Hackenberg. So, and that's the uh, I mean, buckle up in uh, State College, folks. It could be a wild ride. And as much as that's related to the rivalry getting renewed next year, you know, if yeah. you want to win at Pitt, you got to be able that's to recruit. Recruiting things. You got to recruit sure, Western yeah. PA, um, which is just choked with talent that <laughs> Penn State just feasts on. Typically, just not caring, <laughs> just going at it. Yeah, but how about him uh, stirring the hell out of yeah, it? Yeah, well, Good you knew that would happen. That's, awesome. that's his. That's that's what he did here too. Uh, with the Michigan stuff, I think that's a part of the big reason why. Are Michigan we doing questions? Yeah, I'm trying to find the old, trying to double back. Remember we asked this yesterday. Yeah, and you're for those who don't. Oh, know, today's Nick's, Back to the Future Day too, folks. Anyone? Nick's, uh, Nick's Twitter feed is just a constant people yelling at him. It's, we uh, it's very entertaining to see his mentions. Are you a Back to the Future fan? Of course. You realize that my uh, my dog is named after <laughs> Biff Biff Tannen. I did not that know that. Thing. Yeah, so happy. Back to the Future Day. Why did everyone. you name your dog after Ben? That was my. Those were my favorite movies when mm. I was uh, growing up. Still, it still might be, but we'll leave that neither here nor there. Where in the? I can't find this question uh, or where I asked it. I can get it. Um, Doc Brown. Uh, that that whole look that go, that it. long the long gray. I think that might be my future move. The the golding. If I if I start to lose my hair, I'm gonna go all in. The silver look with the the long disheveled Doc Brown look. By the way, anyone who hasn't seen, I think College Humor did a uh, Back to the Future Future Two thing parody mm-hmm. a while back about like what it, what it's really like in 2015. If anyone <laughs> has time to look at that, that's pretty good. All right, I got him. Here, Here we, we go. go. Um, first one from Scott. Twitter question uh, at Scott Calk. Um this is probably an all too common question, but will we see Peppers on offense more? Obviously, if anyone's forgotten through all that, Peppers, to real Peppers, played his first snaps uh, of offense of his career and was, if that game ended the way Michigan wanted it to end, he probably would have been their MVP. It was fantastic. It was probably the most impactful game he's had all across the board. True three way player. Do we see more of that now? That would have been the storyline, one of the storylines out of it would have been. Did Jabril Peppers just kick off his 2016 Heisman campaign? Something crazy, you know, everyone yeah, was going all crazy. in and freaked out. Um, but I think seeing more of him on offense, I think they'll have design packages for him that are very specific to, you know, not having to overload him with, with yeah. different uh, different packages, different looks, things like that. And then also you'll see him as a decoy, no doubt, because, you know, defensive coordinators are going to see him trot on the field and just kind of, you know, crap their pants and say, oh, God, what are we doing now? And well, you even saw it during, <laughs> during the game. Mark D'Antonio, one of the best defensive coaches in the country, took two straight timeouts because he was like, never see that. Yeah, never. <laughs> he was like, this guy is their best athlete. He's their most explosive mm-hmm. player. What the hell are they going to do with this? And he still, I think, no, they got, they ended up reading that one right because they were going to do a like similar play to what they had to Hill where they tried to throw it back. And Michigan State had that one covered, but he came back in.